As offenses have evolved over the last couple of years, hybrid defenders have become more popular in the NFL. The desire to have a player who can play in zone, play in man, and blitz, all while being able to set an edge and run support, has become a valuable commodity. During the 2017 NFL Draft, a player that fit all those characteristics came out of Michigan. I'm of course talking about Jareel Peppers. Drafted at the end of the first round, scouts knew he had talent, but based on his ever-changing role in the Wolverines' defense, not many could define his position in the pros. Some said safety, some wanted him to gain weight and play weak side linebacker, while others pushed him to play nickel cornerback so he can use his athleticism to cover tight ends. While each of these roles has its benefits, a good defensive coordinator will adapt his scheme based on his players. He will carve a unique role for the skill set. After going through the Browns tape, I believe Greg Williams did that. In this defense, Jabril Peppers doesn't play one of these roles. He's all of them, and his ability to play anywhere on the field helps disguise this defense, making them more lethal. For the Browns in any given game, he'll play as a deep safety zone linebacker or a man coverage cornerback, and he'll also blitz using his speed to get in the backfield. He is one of their main blitzers, and in their Week 15 game against the Broncos, he collected the game-ending sack. Before this play, the Broncos were down by one and were driving down the field. There was less than two minutes left, and they were trying to set up for a game-winning field goal. However, the Browns were able to get them into a fourth-long situation at the 50-yard line. If Denver converted here, there is a good chance they would have won this game. The Broncos line up in shotgun with the running back in the backfield. The Browns countered with a single high safety while Pepper stood in the box as a third linebacker. The Broncos called a flood concept, attacking the left sideline while the backside receiver ran a dig route past the first down marker. Since the Browns had seven in the box and were playing off-man coverage, Keenum asked his tight end to stay inside to pass protect. This should have been enough to block the six-man pressure that the Browns ran, but based on the alignment, the Broncos misidentified where the pressure was coming. Instead of sliding towards the four-man side, they slid in the opposite direction. The Browns took advantage of this mistake. The defensive line rushed to the right, and since Miles Garrett rushed outside of the tight end, this opened a gaping hole in the offensive line for Peppers. He blasted through, and he took down the quarterback to win the game. While this is a huge hole, and you can argue that many could have made this play, the key is that by his alignment, the Browns were able to confuse this offense. Peppers played a role in that. Standing as a third linebacker, he will often drop into a hook curl zone from this spot, or he'll play in man coverage in the tight end. Keaton was clearly confused, and that led to this game-ending sack. So far on this season, Peppers has nine pressures according to Pro Football Focus. This amounts to a pressure about once every six or seven pass rushes. I won't say he's a pass rush specialist or anything like that, but in opportune moments where he has a good matchup, he can use his speed to get by. While blitzing is a key part of his role and he averages four blitzes a game, his cover skills is what sets him apart. He'll play as a deep safety, he'll cover tight ends out of the backfield in man coverage, and he'll help underneath as his own linebacker. One of his biggest plays of the season came at the end of the first half against the Broncos. In this play, Peppers was able to use his range as a deep safety and pick off the pass in the end zone. Before the snap, the Browns were in a two high safety shell and then rotated into a cover one robber defense. Seeing the deep left safety jump into his zone, this told Keenum that he had a shot in the back of the end zone. Cortland Sutton ran a fade route and he had his defender beat. Unfortunately, Keenum wasn't able to step into his pass. This put the ball about three yards short. Coming out of his deep safety spot, Peppers attacked the ball at an angle, timing the interception perfectly. He stole away what could have been a 30-yard touchdown. The angle on this last play was key to making it happen. After going through the film, angles from the deep safety spot is one of my favorite things about him. Many safeties will understep the angle since they aren't used to the speed of the NFL, but this is something that Peppers excels at. He understands exactly where the ball will go. On this play in the Chiefs game, Peppers was a single high safety while Tyreek Hill ran a go route beating his defender cleanly. Mahomes saw this immediately after the snap and he launched the pass deep. Since it came so early, Peppers had to instantly react. He took a perfect angle towards the ball and he helped make sure that Hill couldn't escape with the touchdown. Yes, the receiver made the catch, but starting at the center of the field from the 30-yard line and ending halfway between the numbers and the sideline at the 20-yard line, all in a dead sprint is pretty incredible. I give a lot of credit to Mahomes for making this throw and for Hill for his release off the line of scrimmage, but I don't think Peppers could have played this any better. After going through his tape, there is one thing that I think Peppers needs to improve on. He's sometimes late coming out of his deep landmark, recognizing where the pattern's going for the offense. While Peppers is very instinctive against the run, He's not as good at predicting the pass. I think it comes from playing this position a little bit too conservatively at times, and I really just want him to sprint and come down hard at receiver. This play in the Broncos game is a great example. 
The Browns are in cover two, and in this defense, Peppers was a deep right safety covering his half of the field. After seeing Keenum starting to scramble, Peppers should have closed on Tim Patrick more quickly. However, he waited until the ball was in the air to react. Instead of planting and driving as soon as the receiver broke past the linebackers, he almost allowed the throw to be completed. If Patrick didn't drop it, this would have been a first down. As I mentioned before, Peppers is a lot more instinctive against the run. When he stands in the box as a third linebacker, he has no problem getting dirty and making a play. He'll gang tackle, and he can make an impact against the run. While I don't think Peppers is elite in any aspect of his game, I think his willingness and effort to play each of his roles on every single snap is what makes him special. He'll even decleat pulling guards so that other teammates can make plays. Seriously, his attitude is infectious, and it's obvious why Greg Williams trusts him so much in this defense. In my opinion, just like how Pepper is great on steak, chicken, pork, and really all meats, Gabriel Peppers is the perfect seasoning for the Browns' defense. Well, that's all I have for you in this one. My bookie is my official sponsor on this channel. They are still offering a 50% sign-up bonus for up to $1,000. Make sure you sign up using the promo code SAMUEL50 as this offer won't last forever. Before we end this video, I need to go over some housekeeping items for you. Over the holidays, I'm going to be traveling, so I won't have another video out until around New Year's. Once the playoffs pick up again, though, I'll be producing a lot more content for you. Plus, shortly afterwards, we'll start going through my NFL Draft Series as well. I'm still debating what players I want to do, and I'll open that question up to all my Patreon subscribers shortly after the season ends. If you donate just $1 a month, you'll be able to help pick the prospects I break down this channel. In addition to that, another thing I'm toying with is the length of the videos in the series. It seems like every year I get 100 prospect video requests, and I'm debating making them shorter to about 4 or 5 minutes each so that we can cover more players. Obviously, if you guys prefer my longer video format, I'd be happy to do this well, but with that being said, we just won't be able to cover as many players. Totally up to you guys, and again, I'll open this question up to my Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much for all of your support and for watching my videos. If you want to keep this channel going, I mentioned my Patreon account before, but you can also find me on Twitter at SamuelRGold.